I am so not ready for this. Oh boy. What in the nine hills is happening? Hello, Marty. Don't you dare, Marty. Don't you dare. You're gonna, you're gonna end everything. Get off. What is going on with my screen? Hello? What in the world? I did not choose that. That's fucking better. Why is it so tiny? Marty, 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 get off. Marty, get off. Marty, get the fuck off. It is not time yet. Chill out. Can we chill, please? Thank you. My gosh. My screen is breaking. What is happening? Marty! Get off the thing. What are you doing? Stop. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Dad, get off. <sighs> this fucking cat, dude. It is so dark, and I don't know why. There we go, that's better. I have no clue. I'm not looking forward to this, dude. There's only like 30% of the game left. I'm more than halfway through, but then that means that there's gonna be the big chase scene, and I'm pretty sure the chase scene is in the section that I'm at. And I don't wanna do it. Oh no. Fine. Uh, I have to see if it saved, actually. I have no idea if it did save. I hope it did. There should be auto saves at any rate, I think, because there's no save option. I forgot how much I hated this. Why is it shaking so much? Why are the lights already off? Just because my graphics got changed. Hold on. Is it because of the shadows? Oh, it makes a really big change. Let's not do that. It still feels darker than yesterday's, which is odd. Um, but okay. Yeah. So that was just. Moving this, which is like a concrete block. Why is it a concrete block? I don't know. What is that sound? It was like a... Like a squeak? But also kind of like a ticking thing. I'm not looking forward to it. Oh my god, it is mega grainy. Yikes. Oh, Jesus. Hello, Molly. You don't look super scary, actually. Oh, what was that noise? What is going on with the graphics? I need to fix something. It looked way better yesterday. What is happening here? I did that. 
this is what it was on yesterday. It does still look odd and really dark. Because I have my brightness on like pretty high because I'm too blind for this. And yet, is it supposed to be this dark? I already don't like this, dude. There's like no sound either. Am I supposed to go after her or am I supposed to take this? Because I took this last time. I think this is where I'm supposed to go. I don't know what will happen if I go that way, though. I don't really want to find out either. So Molly is up here. I know that for sure. It's like around this corner or something. Yeah, there. I wonder if you're fast enough if you can like catch her like just dipping out with the graphics. Oh no. I don't know. She looked much larger. And then now like in the slide she's tiny. But then, then again like we're tiny. So I don't know. Something's gonna happen here. I can't just go down this hallway and not have anything happen. Why is there like no sound? Something something's gonna happen if it's this silent. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. I don't know if my audio is not big enough, but I can hear something. I don't know if OBS is catching it. Hold on. Where's my fucking thing? Why can I not? Fuck okay. it. What in what? I'm so confused by everything that's happening. I think that is probably hopefully loud enough that you guys can hear it. Um. I might put it a bit louder. I think yesterday's stream, the audio was a bit too low. I do this. What is that noise? You guys hear that? What is that? Oh, I hate it. Oh, I hate it. Oh, I don't want to go down there. Oh, I don't want to go. What is that for? Why is there just like an, an oh? Oh no. Oh. So I was supposed to go that way. Oh, I guess I was just like a fun Easter egg then? That she was just in the slide? Oh. I still hear shit that I'm very concerned about. So. I don't like that I'm going in the direction that. She went in. Why do I have to go in this direction? Can I maybe not? Is a slide area? Is that supposed to be a trampoline thing? What else is here? Oh, I bet I'm supposed to find the... Oh! I, yeah, I see what I'm supposed to do. Okay, because there's the other blocks back in the main room. And so there's a red star. And then earlier I saw the yellow circle. 
So I need to find the green and the blue. I think are the two other colors. I'm just very scared of this bird. So in that case, I'm going to assume no chase is happening until then. Nice. I just... At this point, it's not even- at this point, I'm just bad at the fucking game. Goddamn. There we go. It is way too quiet. And I don't like it. You know what this is giving? It's giving the fucking- ooh. Very cool. I wonder if we could see Molly doing anything. Cause you, do you you hear that right? I hate how that's distorted. Um, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. Oh yeah, it's giving. Hold on. There we go. Hmm, <clears throat> it's giving the um. It's giving Poppy Playtime Chapter 3 with the dog day. It's always these creepy ass fucking playpens, and I hate it. Uh, yeah. Red, yellow. Yeah, I was right. The other two are green and blue. And then because there was the magenta star. What is that noise? Can you chill? I don't want to be here. It'd be cool if you could, like, see, um, some kind of scare happening. Or, like, Molly wandering around down there. Aww. That's just reflections being weird. Okay, greens. Green triangle. Okay. So I need to remember this. Yellow circle. Yellow cir yellow circle, red star, green triangle. Okay. Is there anything over here? There's always these weird ass spaces on the side of playpens, like in real life. I don't know why. It seems kind of unsafe. Like what if somebody gets stuck back there? But okay. What is this? Where in the fuck am I going? Oh, I'm going up? Oh, I hate that. Can we chill with the fucking creepy ass noises, please? That'd be great. Oh my god, oh my god. I don't know what it is about. Hello? Excuse me? I. Genuinely, I can't jump. I don't know what it is. I, cause I watched somebody else play through just like the part to the part I got to, so I wasn't spoiled. They could jump way higher than me. I don't understand. I'm. I can't. You see, this is like a fucking inch or something. I don't know what's going on. Because I, I can't. Give me, give me up, oh, motherfucker. Why are we going closer to the creepy ass noise? Can we not go there? Ah, blue star. Okay. Red star, blue star, yellow circle, green triangle. I just know something bad's gonna happen once we put it in. Hi, Molly! Hi! What are you trying to do? Bestie? It's interesting. 
because I feel like she looks kind of closer to her poster than Lloyd does. Lloyd is just a straight up fucking line. Also, those BDS eyes, I fucking hate that shit. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. But all things considered, it's not, like, the creepiest shit. It's still horrifying, but still. It's because they're, like, she's very bright colors. I just had to take a moment and, like... I see. So is it when the cursor goes on? Because, like, she wasn't leaving. Um, yeah. I think she- I- I feel like I was more creeped out by Lloyd. Maybe because he was a lion. Maybe also because he was darker colors. Um, Molly is just really bright. <laughs> oh, no. Where- Oh, I see one of the slides. Yeah, you're fucked if you think I'm taking the slides. Fuck now. It's so dark I can't see anything. It was blue star. Red star. Green triangle, yellow circle. None of them are squares. Uh-oh, uh-oh. What is that noise? What is that noise? What is that noise? Oh, fuck no. I do not want to go there. Why is my flashlight barely lighting up anything? No, I don't want to go. No, I don't want to go. No, fuck that shit. Nuh-uh. You are so fucked if you think I'm going in there. No way. <laughs> you do do this to me, no. Oh, I hate this. Oh, no. I know there isn't that much left in the game. I know there's going to be a chase here, and I, I already hate it. Oh. I don't want to do this. Where's my fucking, where's my upbeat playlist? Let me get, let me get my, let me get my, my music. I'm taking, a, I'm pulling a Moo Berries because I cannot handle this. Oh, you know, you know what, you know what, you know, you know, you know what, you know what? Uh, where is it, where is it? Should be in here. Fucking. This. This. We're speed running this shit. I'm done. Dream speed run music. We're speeding. Oh, hell no. If only I had a webcam, you guys could see how fucked my position is right now because I do not want to do this. Motherfucker. Oh god, 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 no. Oh fuck no. Once I do this, we're fine. Then we can go read r slash no sleep because I love torturing myself. But that's better because those are actually really cool stories. And the writer's actually really good. And I don't have to play this fucking game anymore. Even though I really like this game. But it's fucking horrible. And it's a horror game. And I hate it. And why did I do this to myself? Oh, no. Oh no. I just know as soon as I press that button, Molly's gonna come and it's gonna be a cutscene. 
like with Lloyd, and I'm gonna get jump scared. Y'all, 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 I can't do this, no. <laughs> no. I don't want to do this. Because I'm really bad at chases, too. Oh, no. No, 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 actually, actually, no, actually, actually, no, actually, how about we don't do this? <laughs> I don't know how to do chase scenes, guys. This is why I don't play horror games. I can't do chase scenes. I'm really bad at them. And I also can't jump. So I just know I'm going to fail a bunch of times. <sighs> Can we watch somebody else play this and then pretend that I did it? Oh, God. Oh, I can't handle this. Oh no. I just... Where the fuck am I? That's a door. That's also a closed door. Um... Where am I supposed to go, actually? Oh, I bet that's where Molly will come from. Fuck no. Fuck no. Fuck no. Uh, oh, I can't be fucked. See, here's the thing. Molly looks so much creepier in shadow. And when you see her in actual light and brightness, which is what I'm on, because I have really low quality settings and also really high brightness, she looks a little bit goofy. However, she's still really scary and this is still a chasing and I'm still really bad at chasing. Oh, gosh. We're fucking, we're fucking turning this shit up. <laughs> Send help. I don't want to do this. Ow. Okay, hold on, actually.
the sooner I get this over with, the sooner I'll be done, and I don't have to do this anymore. Why did I decide to do this to myself? I got jump scared. I got scared by that thing. That's just a fucking lie. <laughs> Guys. I just know that's where I have to go. And this is going to come after me from here. What if I just run? What if I just run and I don't look? Ooh, I wonder what her jump scare is. I'm going to close my eyes and run. I can't go, 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 I can't go. I can't see anything. I legitimately cannot see anything. Why am I so slow? Why am I so slow and so tiny and I can't see anything? Guys, do you see my screen right now? What is this? Genuinely, what is this? I, I'm gonna need her to catch me because I can't see any- what? Mighty. I I don't where am I even? I I'm moving my mouse around, I can't see anything. Oh fuck. Chase music is a banger, by the way. I <laughs> did I break the game? I might have just broken the game just by running fuck knows where. <laughs> That's honestly, of course I would break the game just by being a total coward somehow. Is it not the type of chase where you die? I'd assume so. Why wouldn't it be? But then why aren't I dying? Unless Molly's really slow? Should I just restart my game because this is not... That- that can't possibly be right. There is no way. I- there's- How did I break it that quickly? What? Wait. Did I act? I actually broke it. There's supposed to be a background here. What? Hold on. What in the world? I actually broke it. I I I was joking when I said that. I was joking. I didn't. It actually broke. Okay, I think I got it fixed. I need to go feed my cat, actually. So, give me a little bit. And I'll be...
You saw nothing. Oh gosh. If my cat just comes and breaks the thing, oh no. I'll be so mad, actually. Okay, let's hope it does work now. You bitch, I saw you, you motherfucker. Better not start me in the middle of the chase. Better be after I open the door. Or else I'm actually gonna scream. When I get like really scared by a whore, I don't scream. I just die silently inside. And there's no real way of you guys seeing that. Shit, yeah. Better than the other one, I guess. I am quite curious to, um, Molly's jump scare. I might just let myself get caught because I'm honestly very curious to it. Also, the music was banging. My god. Whoever made the music for this game, fire. So good. You need a raise. Let me see, let me see, let me see. How does this work? Did she tear out my jugular? That's pretty neat. Ah. Oh, there's a dead screen. Molly can repeat words that she's heard. Don't be fooled. Excuse me? What was that? What's that about? That's scary. I hate that. That was very glitchy and also very fast, so I am concerned. Um. Okay then. Oh shit, the lag. Yikes. Lag spike. Alright. Wait, what? Oh, that's why I didn't see her. That was dumb. Oh. I, and the first time I thought, oh, that was super fast. And no, she just. <laughs> oh. I see. Yeah, so where am I supposed to go? Do I go through the one that I thought Molly was supposed to come through then? That was stupid. Yeah, see, most of the time, it's not even just. It's just me being bad at the game. It's not even that scary. I'm just fucking shit. I just know it's going to be something really complicated and I'm just not going to be able to get it. I wish I could have down through here. I don't think I can. So. There we go. There we go. There we go. Hello? I can't see anything. But that's what I don't do then. Okay, so it's not that bad. Except for like really laggy. It is really laggy. Um, because it's a chase scene. Yikes. This is gonna this is gonna be a long time. 
maybe I won't even, I might not even have time to do the Reddit thing, to be honest. I spent 30 minutes doing literally nothing except being a scaredy cat. And there we go. We're going to spend another hour just trying to figure out how the fuck to do this. Okay. Let me in, let me in. Okay, okay, where do I go? Where do I go? Where do I go? Okay, here. I feel like I'm not running sometimes. Yeah, I fucking knew it. God damn it. It's kind of interesting. It's not too bad. Okay. I I can do this. It's not it's not super bad. Okay, it's not as bad as I thought. I would just if I had a faster PC or something or like I don't know, because it is really laggy, and I, I could not even see where I was going after that slide. I was just running into the wall. I don't think it's one continuous enemy. I think it's probably something similar to the uh, Poppy Playtime Chapter 3, or I don't remember what other horror games do it. But they have, like, specific spots that are, like, quote-unquote safe spots because they have, like, scripted enemy chasing. You know, so there are some spots where they don't have scripted enemy chasing, but, like, there's still the audio, so you're still running. Oh, you took their meds. That's fun. Let me in! I'm just stuck. I'm just straight up stuck. Did it teleport me into a different space? I'm just finding in very interesting things. Yeah, I just get stuck. Like my my running thing just gets undone. This is this is just copium. This is just copium. I'm just bad at the game. <laughs> Molly can't repeat words that she's heard them before because she's a macaw. But like, are we gonna hear words or something? Like, is she gonna try and trick us with words? What? I'm torn between seeing if turning my graphics to medium will make it better or worse. This would be fire for speedrunners. Genuinely? Why am I so slow? Like, what in the world? Oh, is that what they mean by the words? Where am I going? 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 I got stuck on that section. Please tell me I'm going in the right direction. The lag was not fun. Oh boy. Hi, Rambling. Come on in, new stuff. There we go. Um. Oh my god, hello? Is that blood? What?
Um. Hello. Yeah, I'm aware. Oh, he's so cute! Wait, I need to turn up the audio because it's too um, soft on stream, I think. Uh, let me see. This should hopefully be fine. Sure, you were given the best. But I was confined to the entrance for so long. Aww. It's okay, little buddy. Wasting all of your fine time. No. Sorry for the inconvenience. I mean, I did almost just die, but you know, it's fine. I have access to the repair documentation in my database. I just can't execute most tasks without authorization from a human user. You must have come here because the park matters to you too, right? Oh, look at how cute he is. I've been seeing your facial tracking data that you aren't opposed to. He's so cute. So excited. Let's get this place back in business. Yeah, that's that's great. Um Why are there human entrails coming out of the fucking parrot? M macaw. Is it macaw a parrot? I have no clue. Why is the bird bloody? Okay. Welcome to the crew, rookie wrangler. Registered. Your first official job as one of Rambly's wranglers. Registered. Is to get. Oh my god, like the copyright. Room. Head left towards the rookie wrangler. Registered. Security room to set yourself free. Phew. Kind of exhausting to say that whole spiel. But Rambly's wranglers. Registered. It's a registered trademark. Oh my god, registered trademark. Expired. That expired yesterday? Oh well. I don't like how dark it is down here. There better not be, it better not have another scare because if it does, I'm gonna scream. Probably not, right? It's real dark. Wow. Interesting. So rambly plush. I think that's rambly plush. So here, Wranglers only. Ricky Wrangler security room. Cute. I love the loading screen with little rambly. I think it's adorable. Ooh. If I had higher graphic settings, I might be able to actually see some shit. That's the merch store we were at. I don't know what this one is. That's, that should be the the Rooftop Races. That's the name. That's the main park area, I think, with the lamps. Is that? Is that the entrance to the park? I don't think so. I don't know. Where is that? Or maybe that's the street with the cafes and stuff. Um, that door. I don't know. That one looks like it's in the... Oh, that's um in the part before, like, the main entrance with the gift store. Oh, yeah, that's the main thing with the Ferris wheel. And then I, yeah, that's the part before we go into the collapsed tunnel. What are we supposed to do again? You motherfucker. I fucking hate you and your bitch ass. You're a fucking bitch. Um, here. <clears throat> So are we going out of the park? Oh, 
I guess that is what we're doing. Um, where are we? I mean, we're still trapped in here because it's fucking collapsing, aren't we? Oh, I see, because chapter two is Oceanic Odyssey. Ah, nice. And I mean, we already kind of saw Lloyd. Big fast standby. Wow, you made it to Oceanic Odyssey. You're doing a great job, Rookie Ranger. I can't go. Oh, that's it. Okay. You'll find a pumper and porpoises, pickles, and perches as far as the eye can see. But please don't tap the glass. Yeah, so this is the uh, kind of teaser for chapter two. Is that the end? I was looking for where around Lee's face is because usually there's a screen, but. Hey, buddy. You okay? You look kind of tired. Do you need a moment? Don't worry, it's fine. I don't plan oh. on taking a rest after all that. This is the ending credit scene. I've heard really good stuff about the ending credit song. But before you settle down. You up for a little survey to help us improve the park? Ooh, a survey. Thanks for visiting Indigo Park. Hope all your dreams came true. This is if you've cute. Got some time and you're up for a lark. Stick around for the Rambly review. I'm here to offer my There's supposed to be credits, right? This is just a black screen. My best to each valuable guest I assist. And this is a ba the soundtrack was so good for this song for this game though. Oh my god. Are you satisfied with the rides? Yes, sir. Were you satisfied with your guide? Sure so. you Definitely. Back? Will I see you again? Did your experience convince you to tell a friend about us? Hey. Sure. Your trust. That At seems Park, suspicious. There is a stark contrast to everything I know this place should be. But I This is adorable. I love it. Let me do this. Out of the dark. Oh, yeah, see, there we go. Given a spark of sunshine to this kingdom's faithful devotee. And it broke again. <laughs> oh, God. It likes to break a lot. Park, more than my <laughs> oh, my God. What is happening? Uh, Mason Myers. Oh, Uniques. I feel like I've seen that name before. Um, let me look it up. Have you? Haven't they made anything else I know? I swear I know that name. Unique. They're a fucking YouTuber? Holy shit. That's probably where. What? That's crazy. Okay, but who voiced Rambler, though? That's my question. Mm, it'd be great if it loaded. I'm gonna pull up probably a video of this after, because this is... Oh, that's... The harmonies! Oh my god. You guys just stuck on here. R underscore review dot exe. Nice. But fight through the dark. And I'll be your spark of sunshine. Oh, damn. Oh, that's so good. Behind. I need to appreciate the full song later. Aww. Oh, the please. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. I think I broke the game again. Yeah. That was nice! I love that game. I'm sure it would have been way better without the scuffed experience that was just low graphics. Oh my god, I love it. Yeah, this screen just fucking died again. Why does it do that? Oh well. Um... I'll probably head over to some reddit but before that i'm gonna go ahead and find this the ending credit song 
so that that way we can appreciate it in its full glory without my fucking really bad <laughs> experience for it. Let me see. What? Okay. And let's see. Indigo Park ending credits. Um, Ramble review. Ouch. Hey, buddy. You okay? You look kind of tired. Is that what it's supposed? That's what it was supposed to look like. Oh my god, that was not at all what I saw. Okay then. That's good to know. Let me see. Hey, buddy. You okay? You look kind of tired. You put Do you captions. Don't worry, it's fine. I don't blame you for taking a rest after all that. Heck, I could go for a nice, relaxing defragmentation myself. Defragmentation? Before you settle down, you up for a little survey to help us improve the park? Thanks for visiting Indigo Park. Hope all your dreams came true. If you've got some time and you're up for a lark, stick around for the Rambly review. Cute! I love this. Yeah, this is a great game. No, oh, boy. Yes. Definitely. Um, yeah, I love Rambly. He's a silly guy. Oh, dragging the screen on. That's cool. That's a, this is such a good song. There's, like, no right for it to go this hard. Dude, a cover of this would go hard. Otter Boy V A Q. Tom Hart. Interesting. Isaac in the oh the founder. Ah. Oh, and the vocal director. Phone operator. Oh, for the I see. Wait, what? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, they got, they, I, why did I see Spiff's name? What? Quality assurance, playtest is Spiff, David Barrett, oh my god, Maxi, oh my god. Or 30 for the music? Oh my god, they got so many people for this, that's crazy. I, I, massive Spiff fan. Holy shit, I did not know they had Spiff playtest this? Wow. There, I hope that there's gonna be a video on it or like him speedrunning it. Oh my god, that would be so fun, dude! That's crazy. And then or thirty Oreo. I don't know the actual pronunciation of the username, by the way. Dude, that's sick. Aww, this is so sweet. Also, I miss so many collectibles. Oh my god, I miss so many. You guys should definitely check out like some other playthroughs. 
Because it is- I miss so much stuff. It was really bad. That's so good. Aww. Okay, I'll let you go. See you next time, buddy. Please. Aww. Yeah, that's so cute. Oh, I love that. Oh, yeah. I'm I hope I can check out the um the second one. As soon as the second chapter comes out. I should probably update my thing. Um, let me find a different playlist since we're going to go on r slash no sleep. What's r slash no sleep OOC? Interesting. Um, let's do this one. Yeah. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's see. There we go. Let me just go ahead and change the category. Wonderful. Cool. They have some. Oh boy, that is something to read. They have some really good ones on here. Um, they have r slash no sleep finder. Is that for extra good ones? Oh, I see. Oh, if you're fine, if you're trying to find a really good one, interesting. Let's see. Hot. Sure. I wish I never found that monster dating website. I was extremely bored one night, and bad things tend to happen when there was nothing to keep me out of trouble. I found myself down a rabbit hole looking at older, interesting websites. I think I saw the Space Jam site still up like a small internet time capsule. Well, yeah, they have those. Seeing that have been a bit of a trip down memory lane. Through clicking random links, I found a site claiming to be a monster blind dating site. I only saw it for a second, and the entire thing went down before I got a good look at it. After digging for information about it, I could, it could, I read that it could only be accessed at midnight. If you clicked on the link at 12.01, you may get a glimpse at of a glance of it but then it would go down before you could fill out a dating profile interesting and then it was a cute little gimmick there's no way it could be real i mean a monster dating site sounded like something my kid sister would read but i kind of didn't want to see what the site looked like the second it was up i saw a chunky mouse cursor and blacky side bars that reminded me of what the internet looked like in the 90s i can still remember the dial-up tone on my neopets username not <laughs> neopets the next night, I found myself counting down the seconds until midnight. I refreshed the page a second after the clock rolled over. An odd excitement came when I saw the cycle live. It reeked of the early internet, and I loved it. The web page didn't lag and didn't have any terrible design choices that made it impossible to read text or find links like real older sites. That's so fair. Sometimes the website design was... Ugh. There we go. Uh, I didn't plan on filling out a dating profile, just to look around. I had a countdown of 13 minutes and not much else to look at. The homepage displayed a few dating- Oh, so there was like 13 minutes on the site? Interesting. 
The homepage is split a few dating profiles and monsters can blue grainy images make it hard to really see their features. All of them were booked up. When I refreshed the page, a couple of, a few of the profiles changed and at least two had some availability. When I clicked on them, they became booked up within a second. Damn. Were other people on the site or was it just a script running in the background? Was it this just a fun little joke or some sort of code for people who actually hire sex sex workers but in a discreet way? I thought I would never find out the answer. Another option was to make you dating profile instead of trying to book a certain monster. It asked very basic questions and thankfully lacked the spot to fill out your credit card information. Uh, as a joke, I filled out a fake profile and used my burner email address I made just for things like this. My time ran out and the site went down. At least that would be fun. At least it had been fun while it lasted, I'm assuming. I wanted a screenshot of it, but when I did, the image was black. I didn't find that... Oh, interesting. I didn't find that strange, but I felt a little disappointed. I didn't have any proof of the odd website. That was... Ooh. That was until my cell phone ping showing I had a text. I read the message. I, I read the message of dread coming to my stomach. Uh, this could not be right. It was from an unknown number saying a date was arranged at 10 p.m. next Friday with a ghost review image of a nearby street corner. I tried to think. Oh. Oh, so they didn't put in the phone number. Interesting. Try to think of a way this jokes I got my phone number. I was under family plans, so my number wasn't even under my own name. If they somehow got my name from, what, hacking my computer somehow? Did I click a bad link somewhere? My antivirus was normally so good at protecting me from my own mistakes. Maybe I should stop being cheap and pay for a VPN. Just to be safe, I deleted the message and blocked the number. I then did a massive password overhaul and a few virus scans that came up empty. Uh, I, came, uh, I kept an eye on my bank and emails to see if anyone tried getting into my accounts to have nothing happen in the next few days. I learned my lesson just I learned my lesson just clicking random links and going on uh I learned my lesson that just clicking random links and going on a sketchy site wasn't worth it. I also avoided the street corner for the rest of the week. I needed to take a long way home from work but refused to be anywhere near the place. I got worried about how they got my address. Did they really have my address or just a general location and send the text to freak me out? I couldn't really do anything about it besides keeping my doors locked and an eye out for anything strange. The cops would laugh in my face if I brought this to them. I fully plan on staying on Friday night. Best not to be, not to even be outside in case this wasn't a prank pulled by someone with a bad sense of humor. But a friend of mine called me over requesting I bring him some soup from a restaurant down the street. Everything was within walking distance and my buddy was sick as hell. He didn't want to pay the $10 delivery fee plus the tip when he could just ask me to do it and give me the tip instead. I put aside my f fear and, do and did him the favor to get him his damn broccoli and cheddar soup. Then a bunch of stuff for me in the past, so I needed to help him out. On the way back from this place, I kept my hands in my pockets and looked around, expecting someone to be following me. See, why would you walk? I get it's in walking distance, but at that point, you just take your car. At that point, just don't even risk it. It was Friday night and almost 10. The sun had long since set, and the street empty of other people. I took the long way again, still refusing to go near the street corner. My pulse rose every time I heard a sound on my walk. Only two blocks to go from home, and I relaxed a little. I, I felt silly letting that sight get to me so badly. From behind, I heard some papers fluttering in the wind. Nothing strange about that, so I didn't turn around to look. If I did, I would have gotten a head start running. Uh-oh. Yikes. Mr. Stevens. A voice came from behind, and I stopped dead in my tracks. The voice sounded paper thin and hard to hear over the other rustling noises. I realized the papers... Oh yeah, I realized the papers could not be fluttering in the wind because there wasn't a breeze. Slowly, I turned only my head, trying to see the source of the voice I called my name. The street was lined with lampposts. From between two posts, a shape came out of the darkness and into the same light I stood under. The thing is at least ten feet long and uh, ten feet tall and long. The body was in constant motion and made of different sized pieces of dark stained paper. Ah, oh. interesting. I darted my eyes upwards to look at the face. A large scroll hung had. A uh, large scroll hung down from the forehead, attached to a massive twisted golden horn. The paper covering most of the face had odd golden writing on it. Under the paper, I saw a pair of sunken dark eyes and a mouth that reached to each end of the face. The hair was also made up of those papers flowing outwards. They were covered with the same golden writing. We made eye contact, and a smile came that showed off countless needle-pointed teeth. 
Oh, the guy just wanted a date. I mean, it's not it's not their fault that you stood them up, was it? I feel like this is reminding me of um some kind of Japanese yokai. They're not made of they're not made of paper, but it's I'm reminded of the paper in the middle of the forehead with writing on it. I think that's a Japanese yokai. I'd, I'm assuming this is a made up monster, but it could be. It could be a real one. I'm not sure. I've never heard of one just made from paper, so. Hmm. Uh yeah. Yeah, no. I booked it. I wasn't gonna deal with whatever this thing was. Uh oh. I ran down the block, my legs burning within seconds. I wish I stayed in shape. <laughs> real. The thing falling behind, easily keeping pace. The countless papers rustled with each movement, and the damn thing started to laugh, making my heart nearly stop from fear. Laughter grew, making my head get dizzy. The sound echoed off the empty road and sounded so clear, almost as if someone was clicking glasses together. My vision faded, and... My vision faded, and I found myself running the wrong way. I should have taken a left to get home, but I turned it right and towards the park. When I pulled through the brain fog, I didn't have a chance to correct myself. If I turned around, I would run right into the creature chasing me. I couldn't keep up running for much longer. My face shrivelled with sweat, my face rough from effort. I ducked inside some trees, a part of the very small park. Thankful my city even had a park like this. I slumped into a tree, panting and listening for the monster. The laughter stopped, and I didn't hear the paper rustling again. Was I going crazy? There is no way that thing was real. I shook my head trying to figure out what I should do. I pulled my phone. I pulled out my phone to call for help. Even if it wasn't real, I needed someone to come down here to get me to a hospital to get my brain looked at. I stood sweating and my fear turning my body cold. Uh-oh. My phone refused to turn on. I held down all the side buttons, forcing the phone to restart. It came back on, but the... Ooh, but the... But the screen showed a glowing golden symbol and not the photo of my baby sister as my lock screen. It simply could not be happening. I needed to find a person, a real person to help. I looked up through the dark trees and saw some leaves that looked a bit strange. All at once, golden writing, golden writing flickered on, showing... Oh, golden writing flickered on, showing the outline of the monster wrapped around a tree staring in my direction. I let out a sh scream that in any other situation would be embarrassing. Blinded by fear, well, blinded by fear, I ran right into a tree, smashing my nose and causing it to bleed. Oh my god, that reminds me of this one book I read where the main character—it's like um, I don't know what kind of thing you would call it. It's like aimed at like the really young audience, like middle schoolers, but like the main character, the female main character, had a crush. And then she saw that crush in a grocery store, and then she ran, like, right into the freezer doors at, like, the back of the grocery stores. She, like, ran right into it, and then she ducked under it because she thought the door was hiding her, even though they're just fully made of glass. That is, like, that scene looks right free in my head. It is so funny. Um, yes. I ran again, mind blank. I had no thoughts but to just get the hell out of there. I spilled out from the trees and into the park. Interesting. The play equipment was off in the distance, but no one was in sight. I also considered trying to hide in the plastic slide or inside the worn-out plastic hollow, a worn-out hollow plastic dinosaur that had seen better days. Don't do that. That is a bad idea. Do not do that. My feet became tangled trying to race up the hill, and I fell forward. The papers were- uh oh Oh my god! The papers were on me at once. I rolled on my back looking up at the creature and directly at the face inches away from my own. The eyes glittered in twisted joy at my fear. I was mistaken about this thing not having any limbs. A set of arms came from under the papers to grab my own. The ice-cold skin made my entire body crawl. I kicked my feet and more arms shot out. Soon I was pinned down to the hard ground with too many hands to count. The creature let out another ringing laugh that made me nearly pass out. I snapped back when the thing flicked out a ton to run it over my face, tasting the blood from my nose. I do not normally kiss on the first day, but you are a preci precious little thing. The monster spoke the whispery voice causing my body to shake. Day, I choked out my moving slowly. I mean, it's kind of weird that the app would not just say, we found a date, are you interested? Just there is a date for you. But like the monster did like come with the assumption of it getting a date. So I mean, I can't. 
blame it necessarily. Was that damn monster dating website real? I didn't have a chance to really think about it. The face came down over my own, the flesh colder than anything else I've ever felt. The sheer cold hurt my skin. Seconds passed and the pain became uh, bearable and the icy feeling started to fade. The hands gripped tighter, bruising in some places. When the monster pulled away, I gasped for air, unable to do anything else. I looked up and did not look like the look in that creature's eyes. It looked starving. Ooh. Mouth wide and twisted in an uneven smile with saliva starting to drip out of the corners of the mouth. Damn, not the drool. Literally drooling over you. Uh, and the long tongue came out and licked it away, but it was a losing battle to keep its face clean. I started to worry this thing had other ideas for me besides tearing my organs out as a snack. You're such a darling creature. I cannot help myself. I do hope you forgive my forward nature, the monster spoke, and the tone sounded as hungry as it looked. I struggled again against those hands knowing I wouldn't get free. My horror, the papers fanned out, and they all came down wrapping around my body and blacking out my vision. I assumed this was another way this monster could eat me, and was thankful it was fairly painless. I jumped awake, finding myself in my bed safe and sound. Ooh, well not entirely sound. My body had hand-shaped bruises everywhere that monster grabbed me. I looked around some by the previous events. It was early in the morning, and I wore the same thing I did the night before. I even still had my shoes on. I heard pans moving coming from my small kitchen and smelled of cooking. Slowly, I started to leave the room holding a bowling trophy as a weapon. I really didn't have anything else and thought the heavy base might do some damage. I didn't get the jump on the one inside my kitchen. The person turned around from where they stood and gave such a wild and wide and blinding smile and made my head stop working. They were tall with an androgynous body. They were wearing my clothing that didn't fit on their frame. Never seen someone with such a beautiful shade of dark skin. Every feature was perfect down to evenly arranged pull back long dreadlocks. I made you some breakfast. I can't stay long. You need to buy more food. There isn't much here. Do you need money? Hang on. That's the monster, right? This monster is so sweet. Oh my gosh, dude. What do you mean? This is like adorable, honestly. Bro made you food. My mind was still in shock, leaving me unable to respond. I watched as a stranger placed some scrambled eggs on a plate and set them on set them down on the counter. What do you mean you didn't own a table? You have a kitchen, but you don't have a table? What? I didn't own a table and just ate at my computer desk. Okay. When the person stopped in front of me, I became so spellbound that by their golden eyes that I didn't even notice they took my weapon away and placed something in my hand. I shook my head to look down to see a small pile of glittering gold pellets in my hand. No, they had a shape I recognized and wanted to toss the gold when I saw they were human teeth of different sizes. Yikes. I can turn things to gold. Oh, Midas. I had these just to give up space, so I made them useful. Do yourself something nice, and don't be late for a date next Friday. Although, I don't mind chasing you down. That was the most fun I've had in a while. This is so cute! Wait, I love this! I love that! They're so friendly! I couldn't find my voice. I had a million questions. The first one was why they had just had human teeth. Just why do you have that? Honestly, fair question. So many questions I found it impossible to pick one to speak. The, this person didn't look like the monster from the night before. They didn't look like a monster at all. When a quick kiss was placed against my cheek and I felt the cold feeling all over again, I knew who this creature was. I, What date this Friday? I croaked out, stunned thoughts jumbled together. Oh, you're too much. Three more quick kisses were... Place on my cheek, and if it was anyone else, it would be cute action. The monster drew away, then quickly headed towards the door, face shining with a smile. I normally eat my partners quickly, but I'll keep you around for a bit. We'll have a great time together until I can't hold back. Okay, well, that's maybe not so nice, but they're really cute. Oh. The eating part's not so nice, but them being together is adorable. And then they were gone again, leaving me standing in the middle of my kitchen with a handful of golden human teeth and the first breakfast someone had made for me since I was a child. I put the teeth down and ate the eggs with some issues. My stomach turned. Somehow I had gotten myself into a huge mess. I would need to keep seeing the nightmare of a monster for dates until it decided to eat me. My life is now to be decided by someone else. I quickly sent a text to my teacher telling to my sister teacher to my sister telling her I love her in case Gil came right back for brunch. 
She was confused at the random message, but I figured it was long overdue. The only upside to this entire, entire nightmare I found myself in was Gil looked cute disguised as a human. That's so real. And I suppose I didn't have to worry about money either, but I didn't want to ask Gil for gold, fearing what I may be handed next. My new relationship started with hundreds of red flags I can't do a damn thing about. Do me a favor, and if you do come across a monster dating site, uh, don't humor it. I wish I'd never made that mistake. Just don't go on clicking random links online. You'll never really know where it might take you and what kind of horrible outcome it may have on your life. You totally need an update? Out of my way, homeboy. I'm about to get it. My teeth have been stolen. I'm not giving them back. Got a monster partner for the time being. Lean into it. Maybe it'll keep you alive a, lot, a little longer. It does seem really sweet. Aside from the eating you part, it's adorable. I love that. No shit, I would've clicked that link so fast, real. Create, make a new fake profile, pretending to be guild. Fight each other over you and take each other out, oh my god. That's so silly. Hmm. Whoa, a winner. Whoa, that's an interesting one. My throat hurts. I might need to... Let me see if I can do this. Hold on. Text to speech Chrome extension. My throat can't handle this. It is so incredibly fucked. Let's see if this works. I like the cold one. I think that sounds very interesting. I investigate cults by living amongst them. Nice. But I think I've taken things too far this time. My morbid fascination for cults began long ago when I was a young man hearing about a terrible incident in which a great many people died. Now, Ooh. I naturally felt immense sympathy for the corrupted minds and souls lost that day, but something in me yearned to understand the psychological aspect of it all better. I get that. The, the psychology is really interesting. Satanic panics, yeah. And 90s. Eventually, though, I found my calling. I decided I wanted to quietly investigate cult psychology by embedding myself within them. As any normal person would say, I joined a bunch of cults. person would say, I joined a bunch of cults. It started small, you know, religious kind of stuff. Groups similar to Scientology. Scientology? These were a good starting point because their collective basis was somewhat still grounded in reality. Not that I was ever the spiritual type. But I could see the appeal even if to someone like myself the ideas posited remained completely ridiculous. Through the years hopping from religious cult to religious cult, I learned a great mm. deal about why people gave everything they had up to join these groups. Now, you might have already guessed the answer, but seeing it and being able to walk into a room of devotees and feel its thick, choking presence in the air made it so much more real. Fear. Mm. Naturally. I was forced to partake in their activities, to eat their food, to drink their drink. I had to become them, or else I'd be discovered. With the comparatively gentle nature of the earlier cults I joined, this wasn't much of an issue, but the constant sense of obsessive duty began to take its toll on me as the intensity rose. From reality-grounded religious cults, I moved on to animal sacrifice cults and then on to UFO cults before ending up here. One beyond simple description. Ooh. After a run of the mill pre joining research period, I found run of the mill, you know? through thick brush and leaves to attend my initiation deep within the woods at the edge of town. Usually, I had to travel pretty extensively to join a new cult, but this one was based close enough that it'd be far more convenient than the other options I had lined up. The thought of having my own bed to go back to every once in a while rather than living in their commune indefinitely sounded nice too. 
Eventually, I came across a group of young-looking men and women standing in a large circle with interconnected hands. A stone was seemingly suspended in the air just above a raging campfire and a man stood next to it with his back to me. Interesting. Without turning, he spoke. I see our latest brother has arrived. Welcome to our blessed commune. Um, thank you. My name is... No names he retorted midway through my sentence. Well, Interesting. Okay. I'm glad to be here, what would you like me to do? I was familiar with initiations, and the audience surrounding me suggested it be more of the same. Taking an oath, reading some words from a scroll, repeating a phrase from a long-forgotten language. That kind of thing. The man still stood with his back to me and commanded me to walk closer to him. Closer to the stone above the campfire. As I walked, the carvings on the stone became clearer to me. It was a face and not one that was human, either. Take this dagger and draw blood. Hmm. Oh, I'd never been not a human to face. whatever idea I'd be pretending to worship before. Bro, so chill. I Just, felt ooh. like I was in a bad horror movie, and I loved it. No, oh my the God. The tip of the blade he handed me behind his back pierced the skin across my palm and I grimaced before he finally turned to me. He was as young as the others in the circle around me, and yet the look in his eyes was one of a weathered man. Someone who'd seen a lot done a lot. Provide the stone with your offering he spoke whilst his eyes obsessively followed mine. Crimson red blood dripped down into the crevices of the carving before me and eventually onto the fire. My train of thought was interrupted by the cult members around me breaking into a collective hymn. Ooh. I tried to make out what they were saying, but it was all unintelligible. Part of me thought it must have been the language of whatever entity they were worshipping, but it didn't sound like any language at all. Then, they began to walk away. Backwards. Ooh. Creating more distance between me and them yet never breaking eye contact. The chanting grew louder and louder and the structure of the circle remained as it had been, the leader traveling in the middle along with the suddenly mobile fire and stone. Part of me wanted to follow, but another, more instinctual part screamed at me to accept their departure. I shouted out, though, in an effort to understand what they were doing. Where they were going. It yielded no results and before long I was standing amongst the tall trees and whistling wind completely alone. Huh. Thankfully, I managed to make my way home from those woods. I've come to find out that I brought something horrible along with me. I spent the next few days trying to find out anything beyond what my initial research into the hometown cult, as I've come to refer to it, revealed. Oh. With no contact from the people in the woods, I was left to my own devices and scoured the internet for anything that might have helped. Eventually, I came across something. Not much, but something. A newspaper archive from 127 years ago detailing wow. the mass disappearance of every 35-year-old in the town. Supposedly there had been 37 of them all those years ago, and the townsfolk woke up on the morning of June 27th to find they were all missing. Hmm. Children walked into the bedrooms of their parents to find sheets strewn on the floor and weary husbands awoke to their sleeping wives no longer by their sides. Huh. Rumor at the time had it that their personal effects were found in a circle deep within the woods at the edge of town. Oh, is it a time? Just like the circle I'd seen. Present I tried time thing? to glean some context into the investigation and what happened next from later editions of the paper but had no luck. It was as if there was a single mention of the incident and then it too disappeared. Huh. Within a few days and without much progress beyond the newspaper I'd found, my mind drifted away from the topic and I found myself looking forward to a little break from my cult investigating facilities. My ignorant bliss didn't last long enough though, unfortunately. Before long a sense of duty began to envelop me. Call out to me. I began to hear the hymn of the circle and the blood-soaked face of the stone entity in the dreams. Its face became engraved onto my mind and it would just be there. Present, always. I'd never been a person with a troubled mind, even given my escapades into mass psychological delusions, <laughs> the grew louder. Clearer. It wasn't incomprehensible any longer, and the things it was telling me were terrifying. 
The fear enveloped my every waking moment and my every oh, dreaming oh, moment. Oh, that's not good. Perhaps I should have known my little hobby would someday move beyond delusions of salvation. Move into real life pain. Torment. It wanted me to hurt myself. To give my life away as I'd pledged. As I'd pledged. What the fuck? I thought before finally realizing my little blood offering was far beyond the realm of simple initiation. I'd stumbled across my first human sacrificial cult. Ooh, the hymns I out should the have expected world. that to be honest, there's yeah. a lot of those. They command me, and I obey. Part of me remains afraid, but fear can be drowned out too. Yesterday, the hymns chanted something nice to me for the first time. Happy birthday to you, you. 35 was always going to be a big year for me. I suppose this was inevitable. Oh. Yeah, I suppose this is inevitable. Eventually things are gonna go extra freaky. Creepy code read. Curiosity killed the cat. Interesting. That's neat. Now that we think the mirror. There's some interesting ones. Ah. Geocaching. Power plant? Yikes. The last time. Interesting. Wait, that's not the one I wanted to press. Oops. Go to this one. I spoke for the last time last night. I have been living alone for the last two years. Fresh out of college I got a very stable and very isolating job in work from home data entry for a Ooh, large medical from company home. out west. I have always been a keep to myself kind of person, and I never really had any friends that didn't last through the next grade or semester. I just never found myself as someone who you got mean, much out of You mean you don't have any friends that did last through the next grade? That's fair. I had plenty of so-called friends drop me when they moved to different states and cut all contact. These experiences of having someone and then losing them have turned me off from friendships and relationships altogether. Real, I get that. I know it's not healthy for me, but at the end of the day, I always find comfort in knowing that I always have myself to keep me company. I found a great third floor apartment near where I went to school, and being very familiar with the area after four years moved myself in from my dorm with no trouble. Remote work from home in my field has many benefits. Usually just a super simple population of data on spreadsheets or systems of medical data and records. No meetings or calls daily, nor reason to ever yeah, be it's on like a really, or camera. It's a really nice job, it's not too hard. It pays very well and I have made myself a good and simple, albeit quiet life post-grad, everything my loner self could have dreamed of. One thing you start to notice when you live alone is how few times a day or even a week you actually talk or even say anything. Ooh. I had no co-workers, roommates, or even pets to talk to, and sometimes would find myself going entire days without speaking a word. I didn't tend to go out and would spend my nights gaming or reading, or in a silent workout at the gym. It is a strangely peaceful existence not having to talk or hold any conversations. When I would talk at a restaurant, to the doctor, or to my mom on one of her monthly calls, I would often have an odd experience hearing my voice, as if it was the voice of another being projected through me. Interesting. Usually, just an odd feeling to shake off, like how it feels to eat food you have not eaten for a while, a sensory adjustment to the now changed world around me. <coughs> this had never been something I had dwelt on in the past. Interesting. Usually, I would go a day or two before eventually having to talk, never really thinking of it as a disturbing or unusual experience. That was until last night. I never typically ordered in food but I had done so today after a busy day in systems and spreadsheets I caved and ordered some pizza from a nearby restaurant online through a delivery app and had it delivered to my door. I always selected the no contact or leave at door option. Chalk it up to my growing antisocial personality, 
but if I could minimize <laughs> any human interaction and maintain my almost monastic vow of silence it was a win for me. That's so real. As I pushed back onto my living room couch, I waited for my food which was to arrive in a few minutes. This piece was shattered by a firm but gentle knock on my door. Odd, I thought to myself as I checked the leave at door option but mistakes happen, I was not pressed over it at all, especially as someone who had driven for a similar delivery app during the pandemic. As I approached the door, I was greeted by a perfectly normal looking, ordinary taller brown brown haired man who smiled and handed the box to me. He said the following in a carefree and airy tone of voice. Have a good rest of your night and enjoy sir. Looking forward to hearing from you soon. That's I crinkled my nose interesting. At the last part but took don't generally to say him, that. Saying thank you while shutting the door. I noticed he stood outside my door for about five seconds before huh. walking away and whistling a tune to himself. At the time I assumed he just expected a good review which I gave him on the app, but something about that hearing from you soon didn't quite sit right with me. I am beginning to realize what he might have meant. Ooh. The rest of the evening went off without a note, I devoured the pizza and went to throw the box away. It was at this point I noticed the top of the pizza box had been cut into a few times by what I assumed was the knife or slicer. Oh, the like a cursed pizza. Off. I couldn't quite put my finger on it. Oh, it it's like, like a, a sigil or something. Like oh, that's neat. Ride. I could make out no recognizable words and symbols so I took the benefit of the doubt and threw the box out. I took a shower and went to bed with nothing amiss. That Interesting. This morning. I was woken up that next day by a phone call, which would have been a cause for alarm but it was from my mom, one of her usual monthly check-in calls. I picked up the phone and spoke into it. Hey mom. Or at least I attempted to speak that into it, instead, all that came out of my throat was a dusty and almost to the receiver. Interesting. I my throat, chalking it up to just waking up, and tried again. Nothing. Every time I tried to speak, the only sound that could be heard was a shrill and guttural rushing noise that sounded and felt like a dagger to my lungs. Ooh. As if they had been penetrated with a knife and only the rushing sound of air out of them could be heard as I attempted to speak. My mom said my name several times and eventually hung up as I frantically tried to speak. I feel I that. My throat's always fucked. Saying I was doing well and was having tech issues but would call her later. I tried looking at my mouth and throat in a mirror and saw nothing amiss. Tried drinking water and making tea with honey but there was nothing I could do to get my voice back. Eating and swallowing were perfectly normal but I could not speak no matter how hard I tried. Huh. A bit panicked, I found a doctor who was open on the weekend and grabbed my keys to hop into my car to race there as fast as I could. I hoped it wouldn't be any trouble that I had not called before. Obviously I couldn't with my lack of voice. As I opened the door to run to my car, I was stopped dead in my tracks faced with the same man who had delivered my food to me yesterday. As I opened my mouth to shout and in my surprise I heard a voice. Told you I would be hearing from you soon. It was not the shrill and nasally voice I had heard yesterday when the food was dropped off. No. It was my voice, crawling its way from his lips through the wry smile he wore on his face. He gave me a wink and walked out towards the stairs leading down from my apartment, leaving me standing in the front door in horror of what I had seen, and heard. Ooh. It was at this point that I realized, I had not lost my voice. It like the aerial thing. Yeah, so that's neat. Thing I for granted had been stolen from me. I don't think any doctors are going to be able to help me. I do not know what I can do. Someone else has my voice. ID take all stars and demand a refund. Maybe that would help get your voice back. Definitely take a star off that review. I take all stars and demand a refund. Maybe that would help get your voice back. Those are funny. This is a cool one. I like this one. How do I upload it? Wait, that's... I keep doing the wrong one. This one. Upload this one. I sort it can I sort it by upvotes? Top 
top. Probably what I want. This is a winner. Heard something in the wall or ceiling? Call us. Hello. We are an independent organization with one purpose. Interesting. To make you feel good in your own home and restore the peace and quiet. We deal in all kinds of intruders, from cockroaches to rats to raccoons, all sizes and shapes and colors. Safety and comfort is one call away. We offer a high variety of services, accommodated to your needs and inquiries, and have a flexible schedule. Call us anytime. That's the job nice. I work at. For privacy reasons, I won't say the name of the company. The pay is decent, the hours are flexible. And I get uniforms on the house and meals. Yes, I do have to deal with all kinds of infested homes, from termites to roaches to bees, and even intruders like raccoons, foxes. Foxes. It can be Interesting. But I take my precautions. I can also take phone duty if I'm feeling particularly lazy. Like last week. Don't imagine we're working non-stop. We rarely get any calls. Not a lot of incidents happen around here in, in this village. Last in week, a village. However, interesting. I had three calls, which was interesting enough by itself, because I rarely get this much activity. Three calls also meant that I had to go do ground duty, because we didn't have enough personnel for three interventions in one day. The first call happened at around 6 p.m. Hello, this is Triple X Exterminators where the safety of your home is our priority. How can I help you today? Hi, yeah, my name is Emily and I think there's something in my ceiling. Hi, Emily. Could you describe the issue with a bit more details? What kind of noises are you hearing? Any signs of anything living up there? Anything like that can help a lot. Okay, um, so I've been hearing these faint scratches, like rats? The scratches started yesterday, around midnight, and at first I thought it was the rain, you know, the way you can hear each individual drop fall on the roof of your house. Then I imagined it must have been the birds, but I ended up realizing it was coming from the attic, because I, uh, ah. heard the scratches, like, coming from right above me. And I thought something had gotten into the house, I live next to Helene. Right, so the gas station. Which one, exactly? The one you pass by going to Caden or the other one down the road to the bridge? No, the one down the road. To the bridge, right next to the creek. My house is the blue one right when the town starts. I don't have any neighbors. It's Pollen Street number 3. So, you know, I'm afraid something got into the house from the forest. It wouldn't be the first time. I just hope this time, it isn't a snake. Mm. But snakes don't scratch like that. Are you hearing the scratches now? They're really faint. But Interesting. Persistent. Could be rats. Okay, Emily. We'll be on our way soon. Thank you. I sent the team over there, but they couldn't find anything out of place. Mm. No insects, no animals, no rats. The next call came around 10 p.m. Hello, this is Triple X Exterminators, where the safety of your home is our priority. How can I help you today? Hello. I keep hearing these scratches and thuds coming from the ceiling, and I think it moves to the walls. I'm not sure, uh -oh. but there's definitely something in there. Could you describe the issue with a bit more details? Anything like that can help a lot. The noises started like three hours ago. At first, I thought it was the pipes, but they're too rhythmic. Like footsteps or more like something dragging its limbs through the walls. I don't understand and I can't identify the animal. It sounds big. This is an old house, and it's relatively easy to dig through it. I've never heard anything like it. Where is it, right now? I can't hear anything right now. I don't know where it went. Could you tell us your address? Oh, it's the same thing? Number seven. My stomach tense. 
Could it be a coincidence? Maybe some raccoon was making its way through homes. All right, thank you. We'll be on our way. I sent the team to the location, and was left alone with Andrew, a co-worker. The night had fallen and I hated night interventions, so I hoped the phone wouldn't ring again until they came back. Honestly, I was pretty relaxed. There wasn't such a high chance that I'd get any other calls for the day. Right Ying. I lifted Ooh. my head from the lasagna. Me and Andrew stared at each other. Right Ying. It had been, what, like 30 minutes since the last call. The fuck? Andrew raised his shoulders. I stood up and lifted the receptor. This is, um, triple X exterminators. How can I help you? I mumbled. There was a pause on the other line, then heavy breathing. Sir? Madam? Are you uh, okay? Uh, what happened? That's not good. It fucking dragged something into the house. What do you mean? Who dragged what? Sir, be more precise. Andrew's eyes widened. What? He whispered. I shook my head and motioned to him to be quiet. Sir, what's going on? Something broke into my, my house. But there's two uh -oh. of them. Two. Distinct, bodies. Not a raccoon. Not a bird. No, and at first I thought there were two alive things, but as I listened more I realized one of them was, dragging the other. Across my attic. On my fucking ceiling. I don't even know how it got there. I ain't heard anything like climbing on the house. Like it just landed on the roof then dug down to the attic. I don't know. Right. No, I'm not done. I got scared shitless, because I thought it was a person at first. Uh oh. It sounded big enough to be a person. I was like, shit, it's a murderer, but that was until I heard it, eating. Eating? What do you mean? Andrew frowned. The fuck? He mouthed. Yeah. I can hear this heavy thing eating right above me, and I hear the floorboard of the attic creaking. I'm afraid it's gonna come down. The thing is dragging something heavy. Yikes. Fucking hell. Please just come. Mm, not some supernatural cannibalism shit. But I know it's not human. All right. I will send someone right away. Address and name, please. Who are you gonna send? Andrew asked. There's just us dash. Finnick Dolan. Pollen Street number 11. Ooh, so Pollen something's Street. happening on Pollen Street? Sir, we'll be on our way. You could probably just ask the other team to go since it's all on the same street, no? Me and Andrew just stood there, perplexed. You know it's us that have to go there, right? Andrew asked. I'd really rather not. Then call Walt. Ask him if they're finished there. Are the houses close to each other? All three calls came from the same street. Pollen Street. Near the forest. Look. Yeah, call them. I dialed Walt's number. It took a while for him to pick up. Ha. Huh? Walt. You done there? Cause I got another call. Liam, there was no one in that house. My hand was shaking on the receptor. Uh oh. There was no creature, no person, nothing. Yikes. However, the scene is rather interesting. I'm afraid we'll be busy here for a while. What? The windows are broken. Ooh. The attic is covered in scratches and broken wood. And there's the blood. It's I don't know what happened here, but we need to find your caller. I think I know where the caller is. We're searching the. I think I know where they are. Right. That I was Pollen Street number three. Cry. So they went far up there.